Wonder, pages 119 through 132. Weird kids. Some kids actually come out and ask me why I hang out with the freak so much. These are the kids that I don't even know, that don't even know him well. If they knew him, they wouldn't call him that because he's a nice kid, I always answer, and don't call him that. You're a saint, Summer, Zima Chin said to me the other day. I couldn't do what you're doing. It's not a big deal, I answered her truthfully. Did Mr. Tushman ask you to be friends with him? Charlotte Cody asked. No, I'm friends with him because I want to be friends with him, I answered. Who knew that my sitting with August Pullman at lunch would be such a big deal? People acted like it was the strangest thing in the world. It's weird how weird kids can be. I sat with him the first day because I felt sorry for him. That's all. Here he was, the strange looking kid in a brand new school. No one was talking to him. Everyone was staring at him and all the girls at my table were whispering about him. He wasn't the only new kid at Beecher Prep, but he was the only one everyone was talking about. Julian had a nickname, had nicknamed him the zombie kid, and that's what everybody was calling him. Did you see that zombie kid yet? Stuff like that gets around fast. And August knew it. It's hard enough being the new kid even when you have a normal face. Imagine having his face. So I just went over there and sat with him. Not a biggie. I wish people would stop trying to turn it into something major. He's just a kid. The weirdest looking kid I've ever seen, yes, but just a kid. The Plague I do admit August's face takes him getting used to. I've been sitting with him for two weeks now, and let's just say he's not the neatest eater in the world. But other than that, he's pretty nice. I should also say that I don't really feel sorry for him anymore. That might have been what made me sit down with him in the first time. But it's not why I keep sitting down with him. I keep sitting down with him because he's fun. One of the things I'm not loving about this year is how a lot of the kids are acting. They're too grown up to play things anymore. All they want to do is hang out, talk, recess. And all they talk about now is who likes who and who's cute and who isn't cute. August doesn't bother about that stuff. He likes to play four square at recess, which I love to play too. It was actually because I was playing four square with August that I found out about the plague. Apparently, this is a game that's been going on since the beginning of the year. Anyone who accidentally touches August has only 30 seconds to wash their hands or find the sanitizer before they catch the plague. I'm not sure what happens if you actually catch the plague because no one's touched August yet. Not directly. I found out about this was that my, Maya Markowitz told me that the reason she won't play Foursquare with us at recess is that she doesn't want to catch the plague. I was like, what's the plague? And she told me. I told Maya I thought she was really dumb and she agreed, but she still wouldn't touch a ball that August just touched. Not if she could help it. The Halloween party. I was really excited because I got an invitation to Savannah's Halloween party. Savannah is probably the most popular girl in school. All the boys like her. All the girls want to be friends with her. She was the first girl in the grade to actually have a boyfriend. It was some kid who goes to MS 281. Though she dumped him and started dating Henry Joplin, which makes sense because the two of them totally look like teenagers already. Anyway, even though I'm not in the popular group, I somehow got invited, which is very cool. When I told Savannah I got her invitation and I'd be going to her party, she was really nice to me. Though she made sure to tell me that she didn't invite a lot of people, so I shouldn't go around bragging to anyone that I got invited. Maya didn't get invited, for instance. Savannah also made sure to tell me not to wear a costume. It's good she told me because, of course, I would have worn a costume to a Halloween party. Not the unicorn costume I made for the Halloween parade, but the goth girl get-up that I'd worn to school. But even that was a no-no for Savannah's party. 
The only negative about going to Savannah's party was now I wouldn't be able to go to the parade and the unicorn costume would be wasted. And that was kind of a bummer, but okay. Anyway, first thing that happened when I got to her party was Savannah greeted me at the door and asked, where's your boyfriend, Summer? I didn't even know what she was talking about. I guess he doesn't have to wear a mask at Halloween, right? She added, and then I knew she was talking about August. He's not my boyfriend, I said. I know, I'm just kidding. She kissed my cheek. All the girls in her group kiss each other's cheeks now whenever they say hello and threw my jacket on a coat rack in the hallway. Then she took me by the hand down the stairs to her basement, which is where the party was. I didn't see her parents anywhere. There were about 15 kids there. All of them were popular kids from either Savannah's group or Julian's group. I guess they all kind of merge into one big super group of popular kids now that some of them have started dating each other. I didn't even know there were so many couples. I mean, I knew about Savannah and Henry, but Zima and Miles and Ellie and Amos, Ellie's practically as flat as I am. Anyway, about five minutes after I got there, Henry and Savannah were standing next to me, literally, literally hovering over me. So, we want to know why you hang out with the zombie kid so much, said Henry. He's not a zombie, I laughed. I liked the way they were making it. I like they were making a joke. I was smiling, but I didn't feel like smiling. You know, Summer, said Savannah, you would be a lot more popular if you didn't hang out with him so much. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Julian likes you. He wants to ask you out. He does? Do you think he's cute? Mm, yeah, I guess. Yeah, he's cute. So you have to choose if you want to hang out with who you want to hang out with, Savannah said. She was talking to me like a big sister would talk to a little sister. Everyone likes you, Summer. Everyone thinks you're really nice and that you're really pretty. You could totally be part of the group if you wanted to. And believe me, there are a lot of girls in our grade who would love that. I know, I nodded. Thank you. You're welcome, she answered. Do you want, to tell, do you want me to tell Julian to come and talk to you? I looked over to where she was pointing and could see Julian looking over at us. Mm, I actually need to go to the bathroom. Where's that? I went to where she pointed and sat down on the side of the bathtub and called Mom and asked her to pick me up. Is everything okay? said Mom. Yeah, I just don't want to stay, I said. Mom didn't ask me any more questions, and she said that she'd be there in ten minutes. Don't ring the bell, I told her. Just call me when you get outside. I hung out in the bathroom until Mom called, and then I snuck upstairs without anyone seeing me, got my jacket, and went outside. It was only 9.30. The Halloween party was in full swing aim, down on Aim Forest Avenue. Huge crowds everywhere. Everyone was in costumes. Skeletons, pirates, princesses, vampires, superheroes, but not one unicorn. November. The next day at school, I told Savannah I had eaten some really bad Halloween candy and gotten sick, which was why I went home early from her party, and she believed me. There was actually a stomach bug going around, so it was a good lie. I also told her I had a crush on someone else that wasn't Julian, so she would leave me alone about that and hopefully spread the word to Julian I wasn't interested. She, of course, wanted to know who I had a crush on, and I told her it was a secret. August was absent the day after Halloween, and when he came back, I could tell something was up with him. He was acting so weird at lunch. He barely said a word and kept looking down at his food. When I talked to him, like he wouldn't look at me in the eye. Finally, I was like, Augie, is everything okay? Are you mad at me or something? No, he said. Sorry you weren't feeling well on Halloween. I kept looking for Boba Fett in the hallways. Yeah, I was sick. Did you have a stomach bug? Yeah, I guess. He opened his book and started to read, which was kind of rude. I'm so excited about the Egyptian Museum project, I said, aren't you? He shook his head with his mouth full of food. I actually looked away because between the way he was chewing, which almost seemed like he was being gross on purpose, and the way his eyes were just kind of closed, I was getting a really bad vibe from him. What project did you get, I asked. He shrugged. He pulled out a little scrap piece of paper from his jeans pocket and flicked it across the table at me. Everyone in the grade got assigned an Egyptian artifact to work on for Egyptian Museum Day. 
which was in December. The teachers wrote all the assignments down on tiny scraps of paper, which they put in their fishbowl, and all of the kids in the grade took turns picking out the papers out of the fishbowl in the assembly. So I unfolded Augie's little slip of paper. Oh, cool, I said, maybe a little overexcited because I was trying to get him psyched up. You got the steep pyramid of Saqqara. I know, he said. I got Anubis, the god of the afterlife. The one with the dog head? It's actually a jackal head, I corrected him. Hey, you want to start working on our projects together after school? You could come over to my house. He put his sandwich down and leaned back, to, back in his chair. I can't even describe the look he was giving me. You know, Summer, he said, you don't have to do this. What are you talking about? You don't have to be friends with me. I know Mr. Tushman talked to you. I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't have to pretend is all I'm saying. I know Mr. Tushman talked to some kids before school started and told them they had to be friends with me. He didn't talk to me, August. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. No, he didn't. I swear on my life. I put up my hand in the air so he could see I wasn't crossing my fingers. He immediately looked down at my feet, so I shook off my Uggs so he could see my toes weren't crossed. You're wearing tights, he said accusingly. You can see my toes are flat, I yelled. Okay, you don't have to scream. I don't like being accused of things, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. You should be. He really didn't talk to you? Augie. Okay, okay, I'm really sorry. I would have stayed mad at him longer, but then he told me about some something bad that had happened to him on Halloween, and I couldn't stay mad at him anymore. Basically, he had heard Jack bad-mouthing him and saying really horrible things behind his back, and it kind of explained his attitude, and now I knew why he'd been out sick. Promise you won't tell anyone, he said. I won't, I nodded. Promise you won't even be mean like that to me again? Promise, he said. And we pinky swore. Warning, this kid is rated R. I had warned mom about August's face. I had described what he looked like. I did this because I know she's not always so good at faking her feelings. And August was coming over for the first time today. I even sent her a text at work to remind her about it, but I could tell from the expression on her face when she came home after work that I hadn't prepared her enough. She was shocked when she came through the door and saw his face for the first time. Hi mom, this is Augie. Can he stay for dinner? I asked quickly. It took a second for my question to register. Hi Augie, she said. Um, of course, sweetheart, if it's okay with Augie's mother. While Augie called his mother on his cell phone, I whispered to mom, stop making that weirded out face. She had that look like when she's watching the news and some horrific event has happened. She nodded quickly, like she, had realized, she hadn't realized she was making a face. And she was really nice and normal to Augie afterward. After a while, Augie and I got tired of working on our projects and we went to hang out in the living room. Augie was looking at the pictures on the mantel and he saw a picture of me and daddy. Is that your dad, he said? Yeah. I didn't know you were, what's the word? Biracial? Right, that's the word. Yeah, he looked at the picture again. Are your parents divorced? I never see him drop you off or anything. Oh no, I said. He was the platoon sergeant. He died a few years ago. Whoa, I didn't know that. Yeah, I nodded, handing a, him a picture of my dad in his uniform. Wow, look at the, all those medals. Yeah, he was pretty awesome. Wow, Summer, I'm sorry. Yeah, it sucks. I really miss him a lot. Yeah, wow, he nodded, handing me back the picture. Have you ever known anyone who died, I asked. Just my grandmother, and I don't really even remember her. That's too bad, Augie nodded. You ever wonder what happens to people when they die, I asked. He shrugged. Not really. I mean, I guess they go to heaven. That's where my grands went. I think about it a lot, I said. I think when people die, their souls go to heaven, but just for a little while. Like where, like that's where they see their old friends and stuff. Kind of a catch up on old times. But then they, but then I think, 
they act the souls start thinking about their lives on earth if they were good or bad or whatever and then they get born again as a brand new babies in the world why would they want to do that because they get another chance to get it right i answered their souls get a chance to have a do-over he thought about that what he was saying and then nodded kind of when you get a makeup test he said right but they don't come back looking the same he said I mean, they come back completely different from when they came. Oh, yeah, I answered. Your soul stays the same, but everything else is different. Hmm, I like that, he said. I really like that, Summer. That means the next life, I won't be stuck with this face. He pointed to his face and then he and said that and batted his eyes, which made me laugh. I guess not, I shrugged. Hey, I might even be handsome, he said, smiling. That would be so awesome, wouldn't it? I could come back and be this good-looking dude and super buff and super tall. I laughed again. He is such a good sport about himself. That's one of the things I liked most about Augie. Hey, Augie, can I ask you a question? Yeah, he said. Like he knew exactly what I wanted to ask, I hesitated. I've been wanting to ask him for a while, but I've always lost the guts to ask. What, he said. You want to know what's wrong with my face? Yeah, I guess. If it's okay for me to ask... He shrugged. I was so relieved that he didn't seem mad or sad. Yeah, it's no big deal, he said casually. The main thing is I have this thing called man di bu lo facial dysostosis, which took me forever to learn how to pronounce, by the way. But I also have this other syndrome thing that I can't even pronounce. And these things kind of just morph together into one big super thing. Which is so rare, they don't even have a name for it. I mean, I don't want to brag or anything, but I'm actually considered something of a medical wonder, you know? He smiled. That was a joke, he said. You can laugh. I smiled and shook my head. You're funny, Augie, I said. Yes, I am, he said proudly. I'm cool beans. The Egyptian Tomb Over the next month, August and I hung out a lot after school, either at his house or my house. August's parents even invited Mom and me over for dinner a couple times. I overheard them talking about fixing Mom up on blind date with August's uncle, Ben. On the day of the Egyptian, Mummy, Egyptian Museum exhibit, we were all really excited and kind of giddy. It, ha it had snowed the day before. Not as much, much as it had snowed over Thanksgiving break, but still, snow is snow. The gym was turned into a giant museum with everyone's Egyptian artifact displayed on the table with a little caption card explaining what the thing was. Most of the artifacts were really great, but I have to say, I really think mine and August were the best. My sculpture of Anubis looked pretty real, and I'd even used real gold paint on it. And August had made his step pyramid out of sugar cubes. It was two feet high and two feet long, and he had spray painted the cubes with this kind of fake sand paint or something, and it looked so awesome. We all dressed up in Egyptian costumes. Some of the kids were Indian, Indiana Jones type archaeologists, and some of them dressed up like pharaohs. August and I dressed up like mummies, and our faces were covered except for our two little eye holes, and one little hole for the mouth. When the parents showed up, they all lined up in the hallway in front of the gym. Then we were told we could go get our parents, and each kid got to take his or her parent with a flashlight through the dark gym. August and I took our moms around together. We stopped at each exhibit explaining what it was talking, talking in whispers and answering questions. Since it was dark, we, re we used our flashlights to illuminate the artifacts while we were talking. Sometimes for dramatic effect, we would hold the flashlight under our chins while we were explaining something in detail. It was so much fun hearing all those whispers in the dark and seeing all the lights zigzagging around the dark room. At one point, I went over to get a drink from the water fountain. I had to take the mummy wrap off my face. Hey, Summer, said Jack, who came over to talk to me. He was dressed like the man from the mummy. Cool costume. Thanks. Is the other mummy August? Yeah. Um, hey, do you know why August is mad at me? Uh, uh, uh-huh, 
I nodded. Can you tell me? No. He nodded and he seemed bum. I told him I wouldn't tell you, I explained. It's so weird, he said. I have no idea why he's mad at me all of a sudden. None? You can't give, can't give me just a little hint? I looked over to where August was across the room, talking to our moms. I wasn't about to break my solid oath that I wouldn't tell anyone about what he, overhe- what he had overheard at Halloween, but I felt bad for Jack. Bleeding scream, I whispered in his ear, and then walked away.